Imagine commuting to work, not just underground or overground, but above rivers, alongside cliffs, and through apartment buildings. This isn't a roller coaster. It's not a theme park ride. It's everyday life for millions of people in Chongqing, China, home to what might just be the most mind-bending metro system in the world. Chongqing's urban transit system is a marvel of modern engineering, redefining what's possible in public transportation with record-breaking bridges, stations that span extremes of altitude, and trains that quite literally pass through buildings, the Chongqing Metro is both a solution to a logistical nightmare and a case study in human ingenuity. Let's take a deep dive into this astonishing transport network, the 8D city it serves, and the incredible journey behind its creation. Welcome to Chongqing, the city that shouldn't exist. Most major cities are built on flat ground, coastal plains, river valleys, or gently rolling hills. Chongqing laughs in the face of that tradition. Located in southwestern China, Chongqing is a mega city nestled within an unforgiving landscape of sharp ridges, gorges, and steep valleys. It's as if someone took a regular city and crumpled it like paper, sprawling across mountain ranges that slice through the city like fingers on a hand. Chongqing is a city of verticality. The terrain ranges from 150 to 400 meters above sea level, a 250 meter elevation difference that could easily accommodate a skyscraper without touching the uppermost streets. Some plazas that appear to be at ground level might actually sit on top of multi-story buildings. This dramatic topography gives Chongqing its now famous nickname, the 8D City, a place where elevators, escalators, staircases, and multi-level highways coexist in baffling harmony. One journalist even described it as a cross between Inception and a giant game of snakes and ladders. Now imagine building a metro system in that. The birth of a metro in a seemingly impossible city. Before the metro, Chongqing's transportation was chaotic. Roads were gridlocked, especially during peak hours, with tens of thousands of cars crawling bumper to bumper across narrow and steep roadways. Public buses and bicycles were the only affordable options for many, but the hilly terrain made both uncomfortable and inefficient. In fact, at one point, Chongqing was rated as having the second worst traffic congestion in all of China. The need for a mass transit solution was dire but implementing it? Nearly unimaginable. Throughout the 20th century, there were multiple attempts to propose a metro system for the city. Each time, the plans were abandoned. The mountainous terrain made the idea of subways outrageously expensive and technically daunting. That all changed in the late 1980s when a serious government task force was established. Their mission was bold. Design a metro system suitable for one of the most topographically complex urban environments on Earth. Why monorails made perfect sense for Chongqing. Monorails made perfect sense for Chongqing because its mountainous, uneven terrain posed major challenges for traditional subway systems common in flatter cities like Beijing, London, or New York. Recognizing this early on, planners looked abroad for alternatives and found that monorails offered key advantages. They are lighter, requiring less structural support, more energy efficient, and better suited for handling sharp curves and steep gradients, all critical for Chongqing's dramatic landscape. Most compellingly, monorails were far more cost-effective, with construction costs averaging around $100 million per kilometer, half that of a conventional metro. While monorails typically struggle in dense tunnel networks due to their need for more vertical clearance, Chongqing's vertical sprawl made elevated monorail tracks not just feasible but ideal. How the metro was built Building an elevated metro in a city full of cliffs and narrow alleys is no easy feat. Using cranes to place the rail beams, the standard construction method now wasn't practical in Chongqing's tight, winding streets. So the engineers built something extraordinary, a custom rail beam transport machine. This robotic looking vehicle would carry each piece of monorail track under its belly, crawl onto the support pillars, and gently set the beam in place. By December 2000, construction was underway, and just five years later, Lean 2, Chongqing's first metro line, opened to the public. It wasn't just a symbolic achievement, it was a technical revolution. A train through a building. Yes, really. Line 2 is famous for an engineering quirk that's now an international sensation. At one point, the monorail literally passes through the 8th and 9th floors of an apartment complex. How did this happen? The land where the building now stands was already designated for a future development when the metro line was planned. Rather than reroute the train or demolish the idea, engineers collaborated with the property developer to design a building that would accommodate the train line. The solution? The building was constructed with reinforced concrete shafts that isolated the vibrations and sound from the monorail. The pillars sit inside wide vertical tubes that never touch the structure, even when vibrating. The result is a smooth, safe passage for trains and surprise 
surprisingly quiet homes for residents. The sound level? Around 60 decibels, or the equivalent of a running dishwasher. Not bad for a train that runs through your living room. Record-breaking infrastructure. As Chongqing's metro network expanded, it garnered global acclaim with several record-breaking feats. Hualongqiao Station stands as the highest metro station at nearly 50 meters above ground, while Hongyankan Station plunges over 100 meters underground, requiring an 8-minute escalator ride that often causes passengers' ears to pop. Line 3 holds the title of both the world's longest and busiest monorail line, stretching over 66 kilometers and transporting 250 million riders riders annually. The metro also boasts the Egongyan Bridge, the longest metro suspension bridge at 1.6 kilometers. The Kaijia Bridge, the highest metro-only bridge soaring 100 meters above the Jelling River. And the Coyote Men Bridge, the longest through arch bridge in the world at 1.7 kilometers, surpassing even the iconic Sydney Harbor Bridge. On foggy mornings, metro trains appear to float through the mist as they cross these towering bridges, creating an unintentional but breathtaking spectacle for both commuters and tourists. The network today and tomorrow. As of today, the Chongqing Metro Network boasts 12 operational lines covering a combined length of 560 kilometers, more than the New York subway or London Underground. And it's not stopping there. By 2035, the network is projected to reach 23 lines, further integrating metro, monorail, and light rail into a hybrid system tailored to this uniquely rugged urban environment. Notably, after the success of the initial monorail lines, newer lines have transitioned back to conventional rail. This time incorporating tunneling where necessary and high altitude tracks elsewhere. It's a balancing act, using the right type of rail for the right terrain. Hongyankin Station, for instance, took three years to complete, with construction workers spending nearly 40 minutes daily just ascending and descending to the work site. Yet Chongqing has pushed forward line by line, platform by platform. So why don't all cities use monorails? After hearing all this, you might wonder, why aren't monorails the global standard? It all comes down to context. Monorails are ideal for elevated systems in mountainous or congested environments, but their taller profile makes tunneling inefficient and expensive. For flat cities that rely heavily on underground railways, conventional metro systems remain more practical. Chongqing simply flipped the equation. Its geography made tunnels difficult and surface rail impossible. So the sky became the solution, right? Riding the future. What's most remarkable about the Chongqing Metro isn't just the engineering, it's the everyday normalcy of it. For millions of residents, these engineering marvels are just part of the morning commute. A train passing through an apartment complex? Routine. A station 100 meters underground? Just another Monday. Yet for the rest of the world, Chongqing offers a compelling example of adaptive urban innovation. A blueprint for how cities can bend, climb, and twist their way toward a better future, no matter the obstacles. And there you have it, the wild, the wonderful, the absolutely mind-blowing metro of Chongqing. If this mega build blew your mind, or if you're already daydreaming about your next trip to China just to ride that train through someone's apartment, smash that like and subscribe. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next episode of Mega Builds.